welcome back to Altair Solar. I'm here with President Khalid Al Sheriff. I'm Ariana Escalante, and today we are discussing net metering or NEM. Can you share what this is? Uh, okay, great. Uh, that's on everybody's mind nowadays. Uh, we hear a lot about it. Uh, there's been a lot of campaigns uh, for, against, whatever. So uh, let's just start with the basics, right? So uh, a NEM or net energy metering is basically the process in which you kind of use the grid as your uh, battery storage. And the reason for that, because, um, you know, as we, you know, a lot of people know, obviously, when you install a solar system, you end up connecting it to the main electrical panel at your house. So, uh, and the system is designed to produce uh, an amount similar to your consumption for the last 12 months. So, uh, solar is obviously only during the day, so the solar system produces most of its energy, obviously, during the, the sun hours, I mean all of its energy actually, right? Uh, and then, um, so what happens is, uh, when you connect it to the electrical panel, uh, the house uses whatever energy being uh, produced by the, by the solar panels, but then uh, that energy actually during the day is more than the house needs. So what happens is that extra energy ends up going back to the grid. So, uh, you know, the government you know, decided that basically uh, instead of having every single homeowner uses a battery system, when they first started, uh, you know, implementing the, the solar programs, they decided that, okay, we're going to use the grid as our storage. So what happens in uh, the meter, your electrical meter outside the house, ends up basically spinning backwards when you feed in the grid that energy. So they keep track of how much they, they, you know, how much energy your house fed the grid. And then basically at night you kind of buy it back. So the, the meter spins forward. So that's in essence the NEM or the net energy meeting. So it stands for net energy meeting. And then the way you're supposed to do it is you're supposed to basically install a solar system that will produce an equivalent amount to uh, the consumption that you had, as I mentioned, for the last 12 months. Uh, this is this is kind of a, in a nutshell what the NEM is, but then there are rules and regulations when you connect to the grid, uh, depending on your utility. So tell us about NEM 3.0 and how is it different from 2.0? All right, uh, I think it's a good a way to start with 2.0 first before we jump into 3.0 maybe even actually go back as far as 1.0 so um, you know just briefly I mean it's not it's not here anymore but you know let's just explain it so that the consumer can understand the difference of the progressions here uh, so 1.0 was uh, you know like I mentioned you install a system and the system has to produce similar amount to what you consumed for the last 12 months and then the credits that you actually give to the utility you take them back at night and it's kind of like like a one-to-one -one ratio so meaning let's say you give the grid um, you know let's say in a day you give them like 30 or 40 kilowatt hours and kilowatt hours is the unit of energy not to confuse that with the unit of powers which is just kilowatt you know so because uh, energy is basically power multiplied by time uh, you know, so uh, you always, a lot of times people confuse between, you know, get, get the, that confusion between kilowatt and kilowatt hours and they use them interchangeably. It's not right. So power is kilowatt. Now energy is that multiplied by time, it becomes kilowatt hours. So let's say you produce 30, 40 kilowatt hours a day. Uh, the, your house, let's say, used um, 10 of those. So you fit the grid during the day 30. And then, you know, you buy them back at night 30, the same price. So the same, so, so NIM 1.0, the rules said that whatever uh, price uh, the utility is charging you for those uh, energy units, they'll basically buy them back for you at the same rate. Uh, you know, that's 1.0 in essence. Uh, then 2.0 came about, uh, you know, a few years later. Uh, and it was planned that it's gonna change from 1.0 to 2.0, but it wasn't clear exactly uh, what 2.0 would look like. So, you know, they negotiated and then, uh, you know, with the California Public Utilities Commission, the CPUC, and then they came up with uh, another uh, basically version of the NEM, which would say 2.0. 2.0 then it changed things a little bit and it said now it matters when you feed that electricity to the grid and when you buy it back, uh, which basically used what's called time of use or TOU. Uh, a lot of us here in California are on time of use rates, which means you know the utility will charge you based on when you use that energy because in certain hours it's more expensive to produce that energy so now basically uh, NEM 2.0 said that now we're gonna you know let's say we fed you during the day at a certain rate you buy it back at night at a different rate uh, and then they've also added uh, a couple of different uh, uh, you know things to it uh, the first one was that they're gonna charge you for uh, 
uh, just a basic NIM fee. It was free before uh, because they're trying to push people to do solar, but with NIM 2.0, then a lot of people ended up doing solar with NIM 1.0. So now they say, okay, we'll charge you a little bit. Uh, you know, just a flat rate. I mean, a flat, uh, I'm sorry, not a flat rate, but a flat application fee. And then they also, they said they're gonna charge for what's called non-bypassable charges, which basically kind of uh, like charges that the utility companies incur, like uh, such as decommissioning certain uh, plants um, and uh, you know other charges for transmission. So they passed on some of those uh, charges to the solar consumers, basically. The regular consumer would pay for them anyway, so they said it's not fair for the solar consumers not to pay that. You know, they're sharing the grid, so we're going to charge them that. And finally, now in 3.0, uh, they're trying to add more charges, uh, unfortunately, that's what the utilities are trying to do and uh, mostly we're talking about uh, investor-owned utilities here in California. Uh, this is just specific to California, other states they also have their own version of NEM uh, that differs slightly than California. So with 3.0, they're trying to add more charges. Now they're trying to actually uh, charge a flat monthly rate based on your system size. Uh, so this is actually going to penalize the people that go for a bigger system. And obviously the people that go for a bigger system are the ones that have a higher bill amount. Uh, so this is, this is still in negotiation. Uh, there's still not a clear uh, idea of exactly what it's going to be. Solar organizations are presenting their own uh, version of what they think NIM 3.0 should be. Uh, and also the utilities are doing the same thing. So the California Public Utilities Commission is the final decision maker on this. Uh, basically, they will get the, all the proposals and then they'll, they'll come up with, a, with their own version that, that should um, satisfy both parts. I mean, there are costs on the utility side that obviously, uh, you know, consumers, solar consumers should take part in. But then at the same time, you want to make sure that it's still going to save the homeowners money and, and to make it worthwhile, obviously. So as these new charges are added and maybe, you know, we'll continue this direction, how will this affect the savings overall and the payback period? Right. Uh, actually, um, it, it's hard to kind of answer this question right now. I mean, we have some projections, we have some models that we've done as a solar industry and more specifically CALSA. Uh, CALSA is actually uh, the California solar, solar and Storage Association. They do great work in this area. They're the ones that are actually like in the forefront of this of this fight, if you have, you know. So, uh, you know, it, so, but basically depending on what the final version is going to look like, it will, it could affect the payback. You know, it's, you know, so just one, one fact that we have to establish is that NEM 2.0 is actually slightly worse than 1.0. So 3.0, we know it's going to be worse. And when I say worse, I don't mean like it's bad. I mean, it's like, you know, basically the ROI or the return on investment is going to actually, uh, you know, get pushed back a little bit. So how much, it really depends on the final version. Uh, but, you know, it's it's going to be, we know that it's going to be a little bit worse, but it, it's it's uh, it's a must, you know, we have to we have to go down that way because there are costs associated with maintaining the utility, I mean, the grid and, uh, you know, solar consumers should take part in this. Do you have any advice for people who are either planning to install a solar system or maybe already have one? Uh, yeah, so if you're planning or if you have one, uh, you know, if you're planning to install a system, a solar system or if you have one, I think uh, some of the things that you could do is uh, maybe uh, there's a lot of campaigns out there. Uh, you've probably seen some emails out there. So, you know, reach out to the governor. Make sure that the governor uh, has a balanced view. Uh, I mean, it's the CPUC or the California Public Utilities Commission is the final decision maker, but obviously this entity reports to the governor. So, um, you know, making sure that the governor hear our voices and understand that, you know, this is, uh, you know, like solar is the future. It's a renewable energy. It's clean source of energy. So we want to make sure that, uh, and everybody should get a fair chance of installing solar. It's not fair for the consumers that got into NIM 1.0, they grandfathered, by the way, for like 20 years, the same thing for 2.0. Now there has to be a fair chance for everybody. Uh, and uh, this is important that, uh, you know, the, the government basically hears our voices so that we can all have a fair uh, chance of installing solar and save money. Great, well, thank you so much for breaking down net metering or NEM. If you have any other questions, please feel free to let us know. Again, this is Altair Solar with President Khalid Al-Sheriff. I'm Ariana Escalante, and we'll see you soon.